Green Geeks and Nerds, and Lazy Universe, and White and Nerdy. And I think it's probably due time I take a look at another comic book since I haven't done it in a while. And I don't like to really blow up the channel mostly with like comic book, I mean, not comic book, movie reviews and TV series reviews. So we're going into the comic book universe. And this time we're visiting something that you could pick up for your kids. But I'm still going to kind of probably use coarse language, so apologies in advance. But we're going to be taking a look at Spider Man Animal Dissemble. <clears throat> now, for those of you that are probably unaware, uh, Spider-Man is my favorite Marvel superhero and superhero in general of all time, and he has been a superhero that I can relate to above all others. This is a book written by Mike, written and drawn by Mike Byhack, I think that's how you pronounce his last name, and it's done in a pretty co cool cartoonist style, and it takes place in its own universe from, Spider from other Spider-Man stories. I saw this at my bookstore. I thought it was pretty intriguing and kind of both funny and cute and charming and to be surprising, it is. It is a wonderful story that's basically like, what if Spider-Man was a part of the Avenger, which he is in this universe, but instead of joining the Avengers and taking down a criminal, he instead pets it for all the Avengers. And that's our promise for the story today. So, let's dive into the pages of Spider-Man Animal Dissemble and see just what kind of trouble Spider-Man can get into while pet sitting. Our cover is interesting and nice, getting across a couple of the New York backdrop, as well as Spider-Man swinging around with some, uh, well, pets. As you can see, there's our cameo from everybody like Thor's Frog, the cat from Ms. Marvel, a bumblebee for Ant-Man and Wasp, of course, and countless other characters, featuring the Avengers that are kind of, sort of, in this in this comic book, and sort of not. I kind of like this, though, and the cover really works for what the story is about to show us for the inside pages. <laughs> Anyways, we actually open up with Spider-Man telling his origin story. It's not much, but it gets the point across very quickly, and kind of reminds me of the Tom Holland film, so he basically told his origin. However, Spider-Man is telling his origin to a pigeon. Yeah, Mark the Pigeon. That seems to be the purpose of it. As Spider-Man tells him that he loves doing tricks and flips and everything, so basically Spider-Man hasn't been Spider-Man for long in his universe. Until he hears J. Jonah Jameson over the newscast. Turns out that somebody is kidnapping a bunch of animals, and for whatever reason, they don't know why. Until he's called by Iron Man. Yep. Iron Man comes to see him in this universe. Made me wonder if Iron Man is still upset with Peter about the armor suit that he has, or maybe he kind of let it go by this point. Either way, I'm kind of terrified for Peter right now. However, Spider-Man is thinking, oh, it's a supervillain that we have to fight. Until Tony tells him to watch his goldfish. That is completely his responsibility, to watch a goldfish. Even Spider-Man is kind of confused at the moment, but still answers confusedly that he can watch and take responsibility of a goldfish. And so Spider-Man inherits the powers of taking care of a goldfish and also Mark the Pigeon. Because, Mark the Pigeon. And the goldfish's name? It's Jarvis. He names everything Jarvis. And while Spider-Man is watching over Mark and Jarvis the fish, Captain Marvel comes around, a.k.a. Carol Danvers. Carol asks him if she can help her out with a big responsibility. And, of course, it means taking care of Shuey from the Ms. Captain Marvel movie. I'd show a clip for reference, but I don't own Captain Marvel since I'm not a big fan of it. But I do remember that Shuey was a big part of that movie, so there you go. And he takes on the responsibility of watching both Shuey... Both Jarvis and also Mark the Pigeon. I know that Mark the Pigeon isn't exactly a pet, but Spider-Man is watching him, so I get to count. And so Spider-Man decides that he's going out. Going to get some pizza, that is. So he stops at his usual pizza shop, but unfortunately, the guy tells him that he's all out of pizza. I'm so sorry, Spidey. I'm afraid I just ran out of pizza. <gasps> Everybody, everybody calm down, calm down. We gotta call the authorities on this. We can't exactly leave this up for debate. We have to call the authorities. The man has run out of pizza. New York has run out of pizza. Hey, wait a minute. I swear to God that there is an Easter egg about Spider-Man with pizza. Wasn't there like a popular movie, like, in, it's still on the best superhero movies ever list? 
Isn't there a Easter egg or reference to Spider-Man with pizza? I'm trying to think, but off the top of my head, I got nothing. It's like a movie that came out like 20 years ago by this point. Hmm. Is there a movie where Spider-Man does something that involves pizza? I'm sure it's nothing. After all, if it was really important, they'd come back to me. I'm trying to think of important superhero movies of the past years. You know, like Doctor Strange, The Dark Knight, ba the original Michael Keaton Batman, the original Christopher Reeve Superman. Which, by the way, has anyone seen that infamous picture of, of Christopher Reeve's son? If not, go and look it up. The man looks just like his father. And then, I know that we're talking about Spider-Man, but Superman is still one of my favorite superheroes, thanks to Christopher Reeves. But, that man should be Superman in honor of his father. I'm dead serious, people. He looked exactly just like him. So, anyways, beside of that, we got a comic book to go to go back to, after that whole pizza pen pandemic thing that apparently happened in this universe, that something bought a bunch of pizza... I swear to God that's an Easter egg from a movie, but I just can't think of it at this moment right now in history. So, back to the comic. Oh, before I move on any further, say hello to a Moon Girl Devil Dinosaur reference. Yep, that is Nunawa with a little tiny devil dinosaur in her backpack. With something staring out at the post office. It makes sense later. Also, Ultron's head is in the garbage. That's unique. So anyways, moving forward, we find out that a dog is throwing a bunch of pizza. How the dog do this? I don't know. And Spider-Man asks him how long will it be before he has any more pizza. I'll be five minutes before I'm able to have a fast pie made. Five minutes? That's too long. That, it sounds exactly like me. As a dog had thrown pizza. And until somebody else asked for Spider-Man's help. The one and only Hawkeye. Well, Kate, a.k.a. Kate Blanchett. Not, you know... <clears throat> not the original Hawkeye. It's Kate. As anyways, Kate asks him that she's just the guy that he's looking for and if he can take care of her dog for him. A.K.A. the dog that's throwing all the pizza. How did this happen? Who knows, but that's exactly what Kate asked him. Not only does Kate need his help, so does Nicholas Fury, who's hiding in the post office box or mailbox for some reason. Anyways, he tells Spider-Man that he's on super, on super spot stuff. I'm undercover. Yeah, sure you are, Nick. I, I believe that you are. And anyways, he wants him to take care of his pet ham guinea pig patches. Could get it? Nick Fury was an eye patch. <laughs> and Spider-Man thinks that everything's under control until it turns into, well, a whole mess. By the way, I love that Spider-Man kind of sings a song in the original 1960s Spider-Man theme song. Spider-Man is really hungry. He'll do the, if he doesn't eat soon, it won't be pretty. I really do like that. It's a nice little nod. And also one of my favorite cartoon theme songs, so who do I know? As everything goes into place and even Jarvis gets ended up in the mouth of Chewie. I love Spider-Man's reaction to this fight. Jarvis, no! As he had to try to keep the pets from causing chaos throughout New York City. I'm pretty sure that wouldn't make any As he ends up running the pets out throughout New York, get used to it, and also, hey, there's Avengers Tower in the background. He runs into Falcon, a.k.a. Sam Wilson. And Sam asks him <coughs> to watch Red Wing for him. For those of you that don't know, yes, in the movie, Red Wing is a piece of technology, but in the actual comic book, Red Wing was a falcon that Sam could telepathically talk to or something or would link to, and this causes Spider-Man to get annoyed. Yeah, yeah, let's meet on the roof. As in, he's doing this for his friends, but he's kind of getting annoyed. As anyways, he declared that he's going to do well, as he gets stopped by Thor. Not only Thor, but also Squirrel Girl. As Thor gives him a frog to watch. Yep, this is actually a reference to Thor, because Thor in the comet got changed into a frog. And it was called Throg. Comic books are weird. And yes, even Squirrel Girl gives him one of his one of her companions, Tippy Toe. 
Not sure if that's actually a thing in, in, in the Squirrel Girl universe, but it happened. And he gets stopped by other superheroes, such as Doctor Strange, gives him a bunny, Ant-Man and Wasp give him an ant and a wasp, get it? Black Panther gives him a panther, and Hulk gives him an ox tile. Because Hulk has an ox tile for some reason. But that's not all. My favorite super superhero when Ms. Marvel comes into the day, asking Spider-Man if he can watch Lockjaw. Because, remember, Ms. Marvel is an inhuman. She was turned into an inhuman by accident. So he teleports, saying that Lockjaw has a slight cold, and he teleports whenever he sneezes. As he ends up doing so, teleporting into New York City, into a coffee shop, into... I don't know where. <laughs> Maybe that place in Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness? Uh, I don't know. To... Uh, <clears throat> to Asgard, to a forbidden frozen place, maybe Jotunheim, and then to the battle of Thanos and the Guardians of the Galaxy. Why the Guardians of the Galaxy are not involved in this, I have no idea. As he sneezes into Central Park, as Spider-Man is looking for Chewie and Hawk Hawkeye's <clears throat> dog, ending up finding them, and also Jarvis and the fish in a, well, water fountain for some reason. As it turns out, the villain behind this... Is Craven the Hunter? Yeah, seriously. So even Spider-Man goes, "I did not see that coming." As Craven points out that he loves the thrill of the hunt, even pointing out that he wears a mut that he had the mustache, a lion vest, and he's probably the best hunter in the world. And he kidnapped pigeons, which upsets Mark for some reason. Uh. As even Craven points out that he will be the best hunter and he's going to take also the Avengers pets and take down Spider-Man because Craven the Hunter. But it's not long before Spider-Man fighting Craven alone that all the Avengers animals come to help him in the best of ways. You don't even mess with Squirrel Girl Squirrel. Them thing took out Doctor Doom for God's sakes. Not even kidding. Look that up. I'm not even joking. So yet they yeah, took down <clears throat> Craven the Hunter. But not before Shuey, basically tentacled cat, takes them down by himself. As Spider-Man figuring out, where did Hulk's Alexo go? Uh, the question about that is that Hulk's Alexo is basically Godzilla. And it becomes giant size and smashes Craven the Hunter down into the ground. Just admire this, is all I'm saying. Just take this in. Hulk has a gamma-irradiated Alexo... That smashes Craven the Hunter into the ground. Just absorb that for a minute. As the Avengers eventually show up, the hell were you guys doing this entire time? As we do have the Avengers, as we can see Squirrel Girl, Doctor Strange, Ant Man and Wasp, Captain America, Iron Man, Captain Marvel, Ms. Marvel, Hawkeye, Kate Blanchett, Black Panther, who I can assume is T'Challa and not Shuri, Thor, and Nick Fury hiding behind a uh, tree. Because you have to remember what Jake Gyllenhaal said from Spider-Man No Way Home. Doing it. I am trying to fool 7 billion people here, including Nick Fury, who happens to be the most paranoid and most dangerous person on the planet. And even the Avenger pointed out, and it's kind of nice, that they had a hard time keeping up with Kraven the Hunter because he has extreme arrow aerobatic abilities, which he actually does, which made him a perfect villain for Spider-Man, and the Avengers had a hard time catching up, including Hulk, but that's because Hulk is... Mm, Hulk. So it turns out that Spider-Man did a good job pet-sitting, and that the, all of the Avengers are very happy for him, that even Spider-Man grapes, flips for joy with all of the other pets, ending the issue of Spider-Man Animal Assemble. Anyways, this graphic novel is actually pretty damn fucking good. And surprisingly, though, it, there are some parts that will probably throw a person off, especially trying to, like, connect what the Easter eggs are in this. Like, for example, Nunawa and Devil Dinosaur, or Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur, which kids, unless they watch the animated series or if they have comic books, will be kind of confused going up to their parents going, who the hell is this kind of way? But it's kind of nice that it is thrown in there anyways. Even some other Easter eggs, like the Guardians of Galaxy fighting... Fighting Thanos, which I'm pretty sure happened in either Avengers Endgame or Infinity War, or both. I haven't seen either or yet. Don't hit me! But, there are a bunch of Easter eggs that are still, that are still in there, including... 
including, you know, having basically the Spider-Man 2 reference of Spider-Man being connected to Peace with Peace, so it was actually very nice. And also, it was pretty kind of adorable seeing Spider-Man do something small, but ended up being something so much bigger for his friends that are Johnny Avengers, which is kind of nice. And you kind of get that scene, get that info, you know, very quickly of who Spider-Man is and what he means to his friends. So it was very nice, and I actually appreciate him, Mike. <clears throat> I'm hoping I'm pronouncing his last name right. Mike Mayhack, or Mayak, for, for doing this type of series. There is more that he does that he does with this only just being what, the first of a graphic novel series with Spider-Man. So I'm thinking that he has free liberties with the character to do whatever that he pleases because I have seen the second volume which involves the Fantastic Four. I would have picked it up, but I don't know if that will ever happen in the meantime. But I do recommend checking out Spider-Man Animal Dissemble. It's a very cute, very charming, and adorable kind of series. So, check it out for yourself, or if you have a kid, or a niece, nephew, or even a grandchild, yeah, I would recommend getting that for them. It might get them interested in the character of Spider-Man. I mean, it also teaches a good lesson about, you know, taking care of pets. That it can be difficult, but the task in the end is very emotional, and it's very... Um, heartwarming of an experience. I was trying to think of the right word to say. They're like, heartwarming. That was the word. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Follow me at Twitter with a link in the description down below. I've been Lee's Universe. I've been Lee's Nerdy. <clears throat> and I... And I hope that you guys enjoyed this comic book review. I know that there are, like, plenty more on my comic and manga shelf that I still have to get to, which hopefully this year I can... Hopefully do that more. That's something that last year that I didn't do quite as often, or I did, but I just kind of jam-packed it all when I started technically redoing this channel over. I say technically because I was on, like, a hiatus break for a short time before that happened. So, uh, hopefully everything will be good. So let me know also down below, just for the heck of it. <clears throat> Just for the heck of it, of characters that appeared in this, who is your favorite character that, or favorite Avenger that appeared in this story? You can't pick one that didn't appear <laughs> in this story, mind you. My favorite, of course, aside from Spider-Man, has to be Ms. Marvel. I love that character. I've loved that character ever since she was created and appeared. So, yeah, I'm very happy with that character. So let me know who your favorite Avenger was that appeared in this, in this series. And also, who was your favorite animal that, that appeared? Was it Kate? Was it Kate Bishop's, um... Or Kate Blanchett. I forget what Kate's last name is. The second Hawkeye. Um, was it her, was it the dog? Was it Nick Fury's hamster? Was it Doctor Strange's bunny, which appeared for some reason? Was it Squirrel Girl's squirrel? Let me know in the comments section down below. But thank you guys as always so much for watching. I've been Gaze Universe. I've been waiting to keep eking on. And until next time, guys, take care and enjoy. And also check out Spider-Man Animal Assemble wherever that you can find it. And until next time.